Hello and welcome to another episode of Rotated Cup Experts. I'm Dr. Orcutt, and today we're gonna to talk about um, something similar to rotator cuff. It's actually in the shoulder, it's called the labrum. So uh, one of uh, my um, subscribers asked a question uh, to uh, describe what um, a posterior labral tear uh, is and how we would treat it. There's two joints in the body that have labrum. The labrum is, is um, tissue that goes around the socket. So it deepens the socket. So there's two joints that have labrum. One is the uh, shoulder and one is the hip. We'll talk about the, uh, the shoulders today, uh, but they do the same thing. They deepen the socket. These are joints that have lots of mobility, lots of range of motion. And so the, the, um, the, the labrum helps uh, give us more stability, but also allow us to, to move and have that increased range of motion. So when we talk about the labrum itself, uh, this is the labrum, so the biceps comes down in, it's called the long head of the biceps. Bice biceps come in from the front of your shoulder here, comes up and attaches to the top of the, of the socket at the labrum. The labrum is this tuft that goes all around the socket, and this is the bone, this is called the glenoid. So the glenoid is the bone, and the labrum is the stuff that goes around the socket. Now there's the front, where we call the anterior aspect of the labrum. There's the back, or the posterior aspect of the labrum. There's an inferior aspect, or the bottom of the labrum. And there's a superior aspect, which is called the, the, um, the top of the labrum. So depending on the tear pattern, you will have, you can have multiple different tear patterns. And so we talked about this in a video before. This stuff up here, the superior labral tear we call slap, super labrum anterior to posterior. The anterior labrum we have not talked about, we probably will in the future. This is called a bank art tear, or the anterior labral tear. The inferior tear, usually the inferior is not um, isolated, so usually the inferior tear is an extension of the anterior, the extension of the posterior, or extension of what we call a 360 uh, tear. So the inferior tear is usually not an isolated tear, it usually has to do with the other things that are being torn with, again, the front or the back. So today we're gonna to talk about the posterior labral tears because that's what they asked me to talk about. And so a posterior label tear, the back of the tear, a back of the shoulder. The tricky thing about the posterior label tear is that it's, um, it's, it's rare and it's non-specific in exam. What I mean by that is people come in with vague shoulder pain. We'll have to differentiate it from other things. We try to differentiate it with the, on exam, on um, symptoms, and on mechanisms. So what happened? Why do they have the, the labral tear? All right. And so oftentimes we may not have a specific reason for the tear or a specific injury for the tear, um, but sometimes we do. And so there's different mechanisms. So if we look at the labrum, the mechanism for a posterior labral tear is the ball going backwards, right? And so the posterior labral tear is from that stress. And so you can imagine, how would you do that? Well, if you have, if you're a lineman and you're up like this a lot, right? And you get pushed back. So linemen in football often can have a posterior labral tear. Also, if you're bench press, right? When you, all that pressure in the posterior aspect of the um, glenoid, so the posterior labrum, you can have a posterior labral that way. So those are the more acute and happen to typically younger people because younger people are the ones who are gonna play football. Younger people are the ones who's gonna lift heavy weights. So the other kind of labral tear you can have is a, good, a degenerative labral tear and you can have a posterior labral tear, you can have an anterior labral tear, you can have a super labral tear and just the degeneration of the joint. It's kind of wearing out, out of that labrum over time. So you can have that too. Now, typically if you have a degenerative tear of the labrum, that usually is not particularly painful and usually is an incidental finding. So we see it on an MRI where we're really looking for the rotator cuff, rotator cuff tear. So let's say we have a young person who comes in, vague shoulder pain, we do an exam, we do this thing called a, a jerk test or our Kim's test where we, we bring the arm over and it clunks, that clunk back and then and actually then a clunk back in. It's called the jerk test uh, or again, the, the Kim test, although, Lots of times we don't get that exam for a couple of reasons. One, because it's uncomfortable. And so people are usually generally guarded when we're doing exams. And so they might not be relaxed enough to allow that. And two, sometimes the tear isn't so big to allow the, the ball to actually completely come out of the socket backwards. In fact, it's very rare. Um, and that's another thing uh, as far as uh, when we talk about labral tears, if we talk about an anterior labral tear, the bank labral tear, the bank art tear is actually almost always because of a dislocation where the ball comes out the front. And that's common, and that's actually the most common way the, the, the ball will come out of the front, come out of the socket, is the front. It is extremely rare for it to come out the back. Again, so typically a posterior labral tear 
doesn't have that dislocation. It might have that stress, but not the dislocation. And so that's important for us to know that if we're not looking for a true um, dislocating event that creates the posterior labral tear, because that's not typically what happens. So how do we treat it? Well, we treat it like ev most every other thing in orthopedics. We treat it with rest, ice, anti-inflammatories, probably some strength in the rotator cuff to help hold that back in, be back in better place. If that does not work, then we go to surgery. And surgery um, is repairing of the labrum. Again, sometimes if it's really just a, uh, a fraying of the labrum, typically, let's say, in my case, in my 50s, torn rotator cuff, they go in to, tear, to repair my rotator cuff, they see the labrum is a little bit frayed or frayed, and they'll trim up the labrum in the, in the same setting that they're doing the rotator cuff tear. So that's a different thing because typically then we're not really worried about the labrum and labrum healing because we just trimmed it up. We're really worried about the rotator cuff and the rotator cuff healing. So that recovery process is really focused and really dependent on the rotator cuff repair and healing and not on the posterior labrum. But if, if that's not the case, if it's a younger person and they have an isolated posterior labral tear that we have to fix, this is how we fix it. The typical way to fix it is arthroscopically, which means through the scope. We go in there and if this is the labral tear, this is the posterior labral tear, right? We'll put a little anchor that goes into the bone right here. And that anchor has sutures and the sutures will go above and below and then we'll tie it and that will hold the labrum back onto the glenoid so that it can heal back onto the glenoid. And that's actually um, really important that we can do it arthroscopically because it's, there's a lot of stuff back here, really difficult to get to the back of the, the um, labrum. Actually a lot easier to get to the front of the labrum, although that's not easy either. And we're, we still do that arthroscopically in the front. But very difficult to get the posterior aspect of the labrum open. So the fact that we can do it arthroscopically is really good and really cool and actually helps them heal uh, faster and have less pain early on in the post-op. So after we do the repair, like everything else, we have to let it heal. So unfortunately for a posterior labral tear in that setting where it's an unstable tear and it's in, a, in a, an active individual, that means we have to really prevent them from doing this, right? So there's not gonna be any major lifting. There's not gonna be any major football in holding the arms like this for a long time. Usually we wait probably three to six months. Uh, we do rehab throughout those three to six months, but we don't allow people to go back to contact sports. Probably, again, I would say in my estimation, a lot has to do with how big the tear is and how good the quality of the tissue is, but it's probably six months or so before we can let them really go into a high level activity again, because we have to get that labrum to, to heal. So hopefully that makes sense. Poster labral tears, that's what they are. Uh, also, um, we do have a, a, a new um, blog up on mybodyprotector.com. If you per prefer to see this in, write, in written um, text with a video of the, of the Kim's test and um, with images other than this beautiful drawing here, uh, certainly go to my protector, mybodyprotector.com and post your label tears in the blog and you'll see that. Well, thanks again. If you have any questions, any comment, please leave them down below. Please like, please just subscribe. Please hit the bell so you know when we have the next video is loaded. All right, thanks and have a good night.